Hello all and welcome to another video. In this video we will be checking if we have any gaming gains when using a DDR5 memory frequency above 6000 on an IM5 platform. I will be comparing thing group T4 7200 CL34 against Corsair Vengeance 6000 C30. The Corsair kit has AMD Expo profile while the team group kit has only XMP profile. Here we have prices from some Spanish shops for the DR5 6000 kits. The prices start from 165.98 euros for 32 gigabytes without RGB. The 7200 C34 group kit that we are going to test can be found at 298.99 euros. The 6000 C36 Corsair Virgin's kit can be found at around 174.9. I updated the cost value to 30 from 36. Now let's look a bit at the Corsair kit. In the application hardware info 64, we can see the serial number for the kit, the year and the week when it was manufactured, and that the kit uses Samsung B dies. Each module has a capacity of 16 GB with both totaling 32 GB of DDR5 at 6000. Now we can see the timings for the kit. Feel free to pause the video to check every settings as I'm not going to read them. These timings are defined by the Asus motherboard. What I mean by that is that Asus motherboards tend to create a profile with better timings than the default profile that the kit has. And here is how the RGB looks like for both kits. More is at the end of the video. When it comes to installing the memory kits, it's quite easy. You have to make sure that the side of the kit with the specs is facing the CPU. Then you just push it in until you hear a sound. This means that the memory is in place with the clamp holding it there. Repeat the same action for the other kit. After that, make sure that both are slotted in correctly. After the installation, we need to set up the memory to use the predefined profile in the motherboard's BIOS. The memory is able to be overclocked to 7200, but for my motherboard this didn't work. It would not boot. I tried as well with 6600 and again the PC didn't boot. I managed to make it work with 6400 and use the same timings defined in the XMP profile for testing. This team group 7200 kit uses SK Hynix dies. Here we have the timings as defined in the XMP profile. If you want to check the timings, pause the video. Now let's have a look at the settings and the performance of these kits in games. First we will start with the Callisto Protocol, a game released in late 2022. I'm using 1440p, max settings, ray tracing enabled, with film grain and blur disabled and no upscaling. Here we can see that there is no difference when it comes to the averages, but a minor performance bump with the 6400 kit when it comes to 1% lows. Moving on to Hogwarts Legacy. I'm using again max settings with ray tracing without blur or film grain. I'm testing the game in the village of Hogsmeade as it's more demanding. I have set a route from one fast travel point to another. For the benchmark, I'm running from one point to the other following the route on the map. When looking at the result, we can see that there is no performance difference between the two kits. The game doesn't benefit from higher memory bandwidth and is quite unoptimized, having areas that have low GPU usage when using a 7700X. Now let's look at another new release that is Returnal. Same story as before. Max settings, ray tracing enabled, without film grain or motion blur. I'm using the internal benchmark here, so let's check the results. When it comes to the averages, there is no difference but we had a 10 FPS advantage for the 6000 memory and I suspect is the 30 cast setting that helps a bit here. The difference when it comes to the 1% low is a bit unexpected, but I had multiple runs with the same performance delta. Let's move to Forspoken, another 2023 release. As expected, I'm using 1440p, max settings, ray tracing enabled, and film grain and blur disabled. When it comes to the average FPS, there is no difference. In the chart, we have 0 FPS set for 1% lows as the internal benchmark doesn't provide that data. When trying to use MSI Afterburner because of the black loaded screens, the averages will be skewed because of different loading times between different benchmark areas. Now, let's move to Cyberpunk 2077, again released in late 2022. I'm using Psycho settings without upscaling, film grain and motion blur. This game is quite demanding for even the latest hardware on 1440p. As it can be seen here in the chart, there is no performance difference between DDR6000 and 6400. 
this game doesn't benefit at all when it comes to memory. It's quite GPU bound. For Psycho, at 1440p without upscaling, you need the 1490 to have above 60 FPS in all areas. Not the most optimized game out there. Moving on to Watch Dogs Legion, another game released in late 2020. I'm using 1440p, max settings, ray tracing enabled, without film grain and motion blur. Checking the performance difference, we can see that there isn't one. Both DDR speeds produce the same frame rate and I run this multiple times with the end result being the same. It seems that this game doesn't care at all about memory as most of the games just tested. Let's move to an even older game than this one, a Total War Saga Troy. Again, I'm using max settings at 1440p and I'm gonna run the Siege benchmark. This game doesn't have ray tracing. Well, this game seems to not benefit from higher bandwidth. The performance difference is so minor that it can be attributed to margin of error. So 6000, 6400, it doesn't matter in this game. Now let's move to another game. This is Civilization 6, a really old game. I have set mask settings at 1440p. This game can produce hundreds of frames with good hardware. Here we have a performance difference between DDR5 6000 and 6400. I know that this game performs better with lower cost values and because of that the 6400 kit loses here as it has C34. The averages are not that far apart but when we look at the 1% lows we have close to 60 frame difference which is huge. This shows that 6400 is not important. Timings are. So, what is the conclusion that we can draw from these results? First is that if you choose to go with a high overclock profile, like the 7200 that we have tested here, it is possible that your AM5 motherboard will not be able to work with that out of the box. I'm not sure what needs to be set in BIOS in order to make it work at that frequency. Maybe it can work, but it's too much hassle for the average user me included. Second is that even though you have only an XMP profile defined for the kit, that profile can be loaded without any issues and most likely it will work if the frequency is not that high. Third, times are king for AMD. As we saw in the charts, there were no benefits when going with the higher frequency over the one recommended by AMD, which is 6000. If you have a kit at 6000, it's better to mess with the timings than try to overclock the kit to 6400. Fourth, when it comes to pricing and if RGB is not your thing, even though I'm trying to convince you here, you can save some money by going with a kit without glorious lights that can be seen here. The reality is that it's best to go for a 6000 kit, activate it profile and BIOS and don't think about the other memory kits with higher frequency. As a user that doesn't want to mess with timings, this will be the best choice from a performance and financial point of view. If you like the video, please subscribe to the channel and hit the thumbs up button. See you in the next one.